All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, the Analyze Your Trade, number 207 on timingresearch.com. This is the uh, the new live charting format. We've been doing this for almost a year now, and it has been uh, worked out very well. Um, so um, I'm going to turn it over to our first presenter here in just a second. But uh, first, just a reminder, all of these presentations are for educational purposes only. Trading is not suitable for all people, so be sure to consult a financial advisor and only trade with money you can afford to lose. And all sessions are being recorded individually, uh, as well as also being live streamed to YouTube today. Um, so the recordings will be available on the timingresearch.com website, as well as the Timing Research YouTube and all the typical podcast channels under Timing Research. So. Today, we're going to start out with Michael Katz, and I'm going to go ahead and turn over to him. Thanks so much, David. How are you doing, everybody? So uh, I'm Michael. I'm the CEO of Trade Pool. We are an online prop firm uh, that funds stock traders. I've been uh, trading for the last 15, 16 years, uh, mostly day trading stocks, uh, but also uh, futures as well. So feel free to drop the, the symbols in the chat box. You can ask me also if you trade in like Forex, commodities, whatever, feel free uh, to write it down as well on, in the chat. Besides, um, obviously, symbols, stock symbols that you wanna want me to analyze or just uh, have a look. Um, if you can elaborate more besides the symbol, what are you planning to do with it? If you have any plan, um, the, what time frame are you looking at as well? You know, sometimes you can look at a one minute chart and it will be a great setup for long, but when looking at a hourly chart, that uh, could indicate a short term, right? So a short uh, trade. So feel free to write a little bit more than just the symbol. In the meanwhile, I'll go with you uh, over the indices and just uh, analyze them for you and with you. And if you have any questions, feel free um, again to write them in the chat. So I'll give you like a overview of what I usually will do when I'm uh, when I'm preparing for the for the week or for the month, right? In like I said, in most cases I'll be a day trader. Depends today. It will be a bit more different just because I'm running the company and. There's a lot more to do besides trading, uh, but generally speaking, uh, the first thing I will do obviously is go to the NQ. For those of you who are not familiar with the NQ, it's basically the future contract for the NASDAQ. And what I'll do is go for the hourly chart or four hour chart and try to understand like the big picture, where I'm standing, uh, what's the NASDAQ is aiming uh, to do, not specifically for that, um, for that certain day, but basically like the, the overall sentiment, um, like the technical sentiment um, on the chart. And by the way, feel free also to write some uh, comments in the chat about how long you've been trading. Um, what do you usually trade? You usually trade equities or commodities, Forex um, options, just so I can get to know you as well and maybe add more value as we go along um, from what you're doing. So NASDAQ uh, four hourly chart, obviously zooming out, trying to get the bigger picture, right? Um, and we can see NASDAQ is moving in a nicely channel, up channel uh, for a long time uh, from the beginning, basically from the beginning of the year, you can see it bounced pretty nicely from those two lines and um, did break through it just a tiny bit, got back, also tried to break through it again. And this is a major uh, resistance level, this 16,000, uh, yeah, 16,000, 16,100. That is a major level coming from uh, a previous high that goes all the way back um, to uh, 2022, May. So, um, a very strong resistance coming from those areas. Obviously, we have another one uh, at the top of the range around 16,300. And of course, 
and their high vol time. So going back to the four hour, you can see that we reached that level, broke through again, the, uh, break the channel, got, uh, got back and pulled back basically for resistance and now dropping all the way, almost all the way down to the channel right here. There are a few major things uh, we can look at that, um, you know, just another stone, um, uh, milestones that we can understand the, the direction and the idea of what to expect to see in the market um, in the in the next months or so. First of all, you can see um, you can see the EMAs, right? You can see the 200 EMA. That's the green um, line, exponential moving average. 200 held perfectly as um, as support around April twice. Then we bounced off of it, pulled back lately to it held it for a second and then dropped below it and it became resistant, right? So a lot of the times when you will see, first of all, you can, doesn't matter which indicator uh, you will use, like which EMA would you use, just go back in time and try to see um, the shift uh, in the momentum between um, the buyers basically that came around the level and pushed the price higher and when we broke that level, we broke that EMA and pulled back to resistance. So that worked pretty nicely. And those things, when you analyze it in general, you can analyze it and basically build your trades upon that. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you will go short on the NASDAQ just because it, it reached back to resistance. But if you already have um, symbols like stocks that you found that looks pretty distant to short them, and then a great place to start your short position on those symbols will be when the NASDAQ is reaching a resistance, of course. Yes, and besides that, we drop to that bluish uh, line. That's a 420 EMA. And not a lot of the guys know it, but 420, it's almost basically almost two years. Um, so almost double the the 200 EMA, and you can see it also worked perfectly the last year, right? Resistance became support, then again pulling back to support, support, and we didn't touch that trend line or that or that EMA for uh, a good few few months, and now we just did that. In most cases, when we will reach something that worked in the past and we didn't touch it for a long time, in most cases, it, we will bounce off of it. Intraday, we had a great place to try to uh, take some longs around this uh, tail. And we, besides that, that day today, we also had a nice uh, move to the upside. And, uh, it, it was a bit of surprise for me because I expected at least to see a better bounce from that uh, 420 and not just uh, breaking through it and as we're doing right now. I expected to see a little bit more push to the upside and only then uh, start the, the extra move to the downside. So in this case, as I can see it, um, we're still looking pretty good to reach those levels. On the NASDAQ, we have uh, this gap that is still open from uh, June this year. And in most cases, we, um, you know, gaps will work as magnets. So price uh, looks pretty good to the downside, reaching that this level that should be a support, maybe a bounce from it. So if let me draw it, it will be easier to understand. Um, so let's say the price will drop reaching that level then a bounce up again. And this is the 420 EMA that we will probably reach uh, and test it as resistant and another drop to reach those levels, the low of the channel, right? I'll mark it uh, in dash. So that's the low of the channel, right? And we also have the close of the gap again from June this year. So it's been like two uh, two months since we opened that gap. 
And in most cases, those gaps will uh, react as support, especially when we will reach that um, lower trend line or lower channel line that we played around with pretty nicely the last year. So I definitely expect to see a bounce from those levels. Obviously, it doesn't mean that from here you will see it skyrocketing and pushing all the way up to the upper level of the channel. Uh, and again, this is very important to understand when, when analyzing uh, the chart, you need to understand what are you actually aiming for? Are you aiming for short-term, long-term uh, day trade or, or a couple of uh, weeks and months? So before analyzing, you got to understand what are you trying to take from the chart. So in my case, when the price, if and when the price will drop to those levels, I would be uh, basically buying stocks that been trading on NASDAQ, you know, big techs like uh, Tesla, NVIDIA, Amazon, et cetera, and looking to buy the dip intraday. So on a one minute chart, in most cases, uh, but this is just me uh, looking to buy the dip on those uh, stocks while the price of the NASDAQ will reach those support levels. Uh, the opposite could be if my analysis here will be right and we will bounce and reach that 420 and get it as um, a resistance and see it as resistance. And then that could be a great place to start looking to short those stocks, the big tech stocks. Uh, intraday, for example, or in um, or in this case, that might take a few days. So that could be a great swing opportunity again for a stock that look that already looks pretty bearish, and now the Nasdaq will give it a little bit more push to the downside. So that's uh, the idea. Another uh, thing that I will add to my analysis here is this indicator below it called uh, the MACD, uh, also a very famous uh, uh, indicator. And what we can do with it is basically look for diversions between the price and the price, that, and the chart between the price and the, uh, and the MACD. So for example, you can see that the price right now on the chart is uh, going down, right? You have a lot of low, lower lows while the MACD creating higher lows, right? So you can see uh, the um, negative correlation basically between what we have in the price to what the MACD will show us. And that in a lot of the cases will indicate uh, uh, again, a shift of the momentum. Uh, in most cases, what I'm looking to trade is uh, buying the dip or selling the top. So I use a lot of, uh, um, a lot of supply demand areas, and obviously uh, the MACD can also very be helpful when it comes to finding the shift in the momentum. Once you see a negative correlation between them, between the chart and the, the MACD, um, it could indicate that the price uh, will shift. And basically in this case, buyers will come in and push the price uh, higher. Um, so, I'll go ahead and add a little bit more drawing to that. And again, obviously I might be uh, might be wrong. And this is also something that we can uh, talk a little bit about because, you know, we as our job, uh, we have basically two jobs, right? We have the analyst side and we have the trader side, right? And a lot of the guys uh, you see on YouTube or whatever, in most cases will be, on the analyst side and we'll stick to that because it's easier to analyze, you know, just stand in front of a chart and uh, try to draw some lines, et cetera. And if you write, that's great. But um, the shift that in most cases we need to do, and it's ba it's more of a mental side, um, is basically becoming also traders and not just um, analyzers, right? A analysts. So. So it's super important to do that shift and not just stay in one part of the game. And in order to do so, if you are a good analyst and and you draw the line and you see over and over again that in most cases you are right, that will give you that one of the things that will give you some um, 
some momentum in order to move to that trader side that actually execute the trades and manage the trade, right? And take the risk. Because as analysts, it's super easy not to take the risk. But once you move into the trader side, it will be a little bit harder to execute because, you know, theory and, uh, and real, like in anything we do in life. So I will add a little bit more drawing to this, uh, just because um, uh, I saw the behavior of the MACD for many, many years. And sometimes you can, obviously, after a long time that you're watching it, you can try to imitate it or try to understand what's the next step for it. So if I'm right on what, I'm, uh, what I just uh, drew, we can add a little bit more from the MACD as well. So for example, if the price will continue to the downside and reach that support level, then the MACD probably will do the same and drop also to the downside and might break that low, right? I mean, increase that just a bit, okay. So let's say the price continue to the downside. MACD is dropping down again. Price reached that support level, MACD is up again. And here is the trick that you might uh, see. And again, this is a four hourly chart. So maybe you will see it like in um, you know two weeks or three weeks. You can take a screenshot or just watch the, the video later on to see if I was right. Um, the the bounce here will be probably the same. So the price of the, the NASDAQ will go higher, the MACD will go higher, but then the price will drop to a new low while the MACD will drop, but won't break that previous low. So you will see something like this, two lower highs on the MACD, while the price, the chart will create two lower lows. Right, that's in one low, and that's the second one reaching that uh, close of the gap and basically the low of the of the channel. If we will have that, uh, then that will be a great place or a great indication that the price will pop up and uh, and push higher. Again, maybe uh, try to test this uh, 420, or maybe even more go all the way to the 200. We will see about that later on. But as for the form or the setup that I would like to see in order to go long on the NASDAQ, it's it should be similar to what I'm uh, drawing right now. Obviously, I might be wrong completely and, to, and tomorrow the market will crash or whatever. But I've seen it enough to say that in most cases that that will be the behavior um, you could expect. Maybe not 100%, um, but yeah, like 80% easily. So um, besides that, after the bounce, of course, we will uh, need to analyze it again and see if it can uh, break through that channel. Breaking through that channel can bring a lot of uh, negative momentum and another drop and so on. So once you finish uh, doing that and analyzing the NASDAQ, um, in most cases, I will go to the S&P. That's the ES, the mini S&P 500. And obviously, it looks pretty much the same as the NASDAQ. Again, look at the 420, how it worked perfectly held support here. And then we didn't reach it yet. Um, this time, the NASDAQ did reach it. S&P not yet. So I do expect to see a bounce from it. And you can also say that it makes sense because those are support levels coming from the, pre the previous month, so like from June. So that makes sense that we will see a, um, a bounce from the 420 EMA. And remember that you still have a gap also open on the S&P at around, um, again, June, the same time. So uh, mark those levels as well. In most cases, we will test them and we will see a bounce from them uh, again. So make sure you have them on the chart. 
when analyzing the indices, obviously sometimes the NASDAQ will be more aggressive than the S&P. It makes sense just because of the size of the companies that uh, um, are trading uh, within the NASDAQ. Um, obviously, uh, you can check also the IWM, the, the Russell 2000, or the RTY, that's the, um, that's the, the symbol for the future. And you can uh, check that as well, because a lot of the time lately, the, when NASDAQ and S&P are dropping, you will see uh, that there is a negative correlation with the IWM, with the Russell 2000, and it will bounce once they drop in. So uh, try to keep an eye on that as well. If we will have a strong move to the, uh, to the downside on the NASDAQ, then it might be a good place to, uh, to look at the Russell 2000. So in most cases, it will be 4H and 1H uh, that I would look at hourly and four hour. And I will add to that also the VIX, the volatility index, um, for those of you not familiar, it's basically, um, like to put it very simple, it will go the opposite direction of the S&P. So if the S&P going higher, the, the VIX will go lower and the opposite. So once we have uh, that um, logic, then what we need to do is just mark the levels, again, supply and demand areas for, uh, for the VIX as well. And we can correlate that with the S&P. So for example, if the S&P is dropping to those, um, to close that gap that we just uh, saw, if the S&P will reach the gap, that means a support for the S&P. On the other side, in most cases, you will see the VIX reaching a major resistance level, right? And once you have those two in line, then you can understand that the bounce from the S&P should occur and the VIX should drop. And then you can look for uh, buying the S&P or buying any big companies um, trading in the S&P or the NASDAQ, et cetera. Again, it could be intraday, it could be higher time frame. The difference will be how strong how major, how strong is the level basically, right? So those levels that we just saw uh, for, the, um, uh, for the close of the gap should be pretty strong when we will reach them one day. Could be tomorrow, it could be in three months from now, but once we'll reach them, you can easily expect to see a bounce from those levels of the gap that we just saw in the S&P and the NASDAQ. Um, and if the VIX will be, at around the res major resistance, then you can understand that the play that will come afterwards should be a strong play or a long play and not just um, intraday move and continue to the downside. That's just one, obviously, one um, way to look at it. Going back to it just a tiny bit uh, for the S&P, another way you can analyze to understand how good the level will be or or becoming like the support level let's say here at the, the open gap let me mark it so one more thing you can do is basically watch the chart watch the price section around the level right so this is the gap the open of the gap the close of the gap and basically if we drop in down uh, we have few uh, ways to to reach that level, right? It could be with a tiny red candles. It could be with one major drop. Uh, it could be on high volume or low volume. Once you analyze them, you will have a better chance to understand uh, if the price uh, will hold that resist, will hold that support or uh, might uh, break through it, right? So for example, mm, let me catch that. Okay, in, in most cases, not all of the time, but in most cases, if you go to the last three waves, you can see a shift in the momentum, let's say here, right? You have a nice move to the upside, and then the second wave is much uh, weaker 
than the previous one, more red candles, uh, smaller candles as well, break into a new high, but not continuing uh, more. So a very tiny uh, wave or trend. And then the third one as well, not even uh, looking to break through that, right? So once we see in those kind of parameters, like indication that the price might shift, we can understand that, let's say if there was a major resistance here, we can understand that uh, the resistant uh, should hold basically and the price should drop. So the same concept could be uh, for the S&P or the, or the NASDAQ once we will reach those levels of, um, of the gap. So let's say uh, we will drop like here and then just a pullback. Another one that will be the angle, like you will see the angle of the of the um, drop, the second drop won't be as uh, as good. Maybe another drop that will be something like that, right? So you can easily see that the waves, the shape, are getting uh, much weaker. It will be with more the the sellers, obviously. Yeah. So a lot of the sellers will become weaker than the candles, the red candles, the negative candles will be. Uh, narrow, like smaller, and you will see also the like the angle is basically becoming flatter and not um, not very sharp and aggressive. So those kind of indications could help understanding that the price should hold the um, the support level. And of course, like I said, you will see the MACD probably creating new lower lows. Uh, sorry, new lower highs and the price will create lower lows. Yeah, so that's uh, for the S&P, the NASDAQ. This is something you can do on a regular basis every week. And of course, if you're trading, if you're actively trading, then um, you, will, you, know, you will remember how it looks like and you don't have to go through it every single day. But uh, this is something that definitely will help your trading if you'll do it at least once a week, once, uh, two weeks, and so on. Okay, let me go through some of the stuff that you wrote. If you have more, feel free. And if you, you have any questions as well, feel free. Uh, the S&P daily, so that's kind of the same as uh, what we just talked about. I'm looking at the four hour chart just because uh, there are more candles and you can see things you won't see on the hourly, on the daily chart, right? Because the daily chart uh, will, uh, will contain more, um, you know, will shrink it to one candle instead of watching four, uh, four candles, let's say on hourly chart or six candles, et cetera. Uh, okay, so again, looking pretty good to continue to the downside, in my opinion, reaching those support levels, those support levels, at least for now, as I see it, will hold, and from there, a bounce to the upside makes um, makes a lot of sense. Here, you can see a nicely negative correlation between the MACD and the chart right here. Look at this. Two lower highs right? While the price created two higher or even three higher highs, right? So this is one indication that the price could drop. Another indication, what we talked about, like the, the trend and the angles. Uh, third indication will be obviously the resistance area right here. That's the previous uh, resistance makes sense that it will hold uh, again. Another indication, the VIX reached uh, support and another indication, NASDAQ also reached a major resistance level with a negative um, uh, diversion in the MACD. So we, this is basically, and again, this is only obviously my opinion, maybe someone else will tell you a, a, a different uh, way, 
there are many ways to trade or to analyze, but at least in my opinion, if you want to analyze it correctly, it doesn't matter which asset are you looking for, at, uh, you just need to you know, just build it, that puzzle. Never take um, RSI or MACD or ADX or whatever and just use it. Okay, I see a negative correlation. I'm going short or long. You got to complete the puzzle. You got to complete the, the picture. Um, try to find at least four or five uh, parameters that will combine together. And once you saw that, then the chances for you, um, the chances that the analysis that you did to work will be higher. Now, as I said before, you need to go and shift, move yourself from the analyst seat to the trader seat. Because obviously it's not just um, you know drawing lines and be right. It's actually, okay, now that I understand that the price might drop or have more chances to drop than not, how do I uh, create the trade on it? either on the, the NASDAQ, the S&P, or like I said, taking short on those stocks, uh, whatever, uh, big tech uh, companies. So that's the idea. Once you have, you have the story, now you need to execute it. And inside of that execution, you have obviously uh, risk management, how much you're willing to lose, uh, how many shares you need to buy, how do you get into that trade? Um, you know, how many pieces of scaling in? It doesn't make sense to go uh, in in one chunk. If you do that, I, I definitely recommend you to stop doing that. Scaling into a trade, that's the only way, in, again, in my eyes, that can actually work over time because you don't really need to uh, be so accurate on your execution. Once you understand, let's say this short, once you understand that, then you can start scaling in and short it, even if the price didn't drop yet, because you're building your position. So of course you need to understand how much you're willing to lose, how much money you're risking for that trade, and then uh, how to scale in and break the scale into few pieces so you can actually um, not gonna going to let the trade work not not necessarily that it will start working just right from the first click that you took hope it makes sense and once you're in and you scaled into the position now what do you do where do you add more to your position in order to get more from that trade and obviously where do you cover uh, your position as well so those are the stuff that you need to do besides the analyst part. And maybe a, a tiny bit before I'm going over your symbols. Once you're in a trade, let's say you, you did your analysis or even this one, like taking the, the long side right here when it will reach those um, support levels of the gap, right? Once it reached that support level and you decided to go uh, long, and you scaled in and you have the, the risk that you're willing to take, the first thing in most cases that comes in mind for in a trade of mine will be usually, where do I cover? How do I take my profit and get out of the trade? What, uh, what I see in our, with our funded traders, the guys that actually trade in our capital, is uh, that the, at least the the best uh, one from that group is that they thinking of how do I add more to my position and make it bigger? Because remember, you did your analysis. You understand that in most cases, the price should continue or shift in this case to the upside, right? Now that you did all that and you already have the risk management and you scaled in perfectly and all of that, now, instead of running away from that trade, you need to think, shift your mind on how I'm going to make that a big trade. Uh, you don't see, I don't know, Steph Curry or LeBron James going into the court and thinking how they, they can um, 
you know, uh, lose by two points the game, right? They're going in and thinking how they can win that game. And besides that, how they can win big, not just by two points. So th that's the same idea, the same mentality you, you want to have as a trader. Once you analyze it correctly, then you need to attack the trade and not be defensive. So uh, it's not, uh, not, not an easy task to, to do. Uh, think always offensive. But if you do so, uh, you will see a major change in your trading. And instead of making $200 on a trade, you will start making $800 on a trade just because you added more to your position once um, it goes to your favor. Okay, let's go through some of the questions. So S&P, we talked about Apple, I will check in a second. Uh, for the EMA, you're talking about the NASDAQ. Uh, I'm using two of them. In most cases you won't see, I won't use it to, to really trade, but, but just to get the idea. So we have the 200 EMA that it broke um, and retest as resistance. And we have the 420 EMA when we held for a tiny second and now breaking it uh, again. So 200 and 420, I'm using EMAs and not, uh, actually the, this one is the um, uh, simple, but the 200 is uh, EMA. Um, so yeah, I also talked about what are the likelihood for the gap to, to be filled. Okay, that's great. Target, okay, let's see, TGT. Yeah, that's interesting chart. I didn't look at, at it for a while, as you can see. Let me clear the lines first. I've been short for a while. Key support. Okay, let's look at it. I'm going to the daily chart for a sec just to, to get an idea of what happened in the last uh, few years, just to remind myself, because I didn't look at on that chart uh, for a while. Obviously, the first thing that comes in mind is is this one, the one at around 138.50. You can see the gap, uh, close of the gap. Let me put the line here. So yeah, something like that. So the gap got filled, bounce, another bounce, broke it, retest it as resistance. So that's a major level that we just uh, uh, broke a few, like two weeks ago, a month. So this is something we want to keep an eye on. And what I'll do is basically go again to the past just to try to see what the next level will be, right? That's the idea. So this is another major level, the 125.60. You can see the gap that got filled and we reached that resistance first, broke through it. We can, we can have a look and see uh, what to expect from it. And we do have another one at 114.60. Again, uh, this is, uh, I might be wrong, like 20, 30 cents here. Yeah, I'm not trying to, to make it exactly that, just the idea of it. But now we can zoom in and see what we can get out of it. So first of all, you can see how perfectly it held the, the 125.30, held perfectly the last uh, three months. You can see a, a positive diversion from the, for the MACD, right? Lower highs, while the price reached and made uh, lower lows. Just a tiny one, but but made it. 
I see that my camera uh, got too heated or something. Sorry about that. Um, and we just had the earnings like two days ago. So what we can do is basically create scenarios, right? One of the things we want to do is just bring, uh, understand, analyze it, and then uh, try to build to build this scenario as we just did with the Nasdaq, just to get the idea of what we are looking for. And sometimes we will create a great scenario in our mind, at least, and it won't work or won't go to our direction, and that's fine. the The idea of what we're trying to execute as traders is only after we saw that. You know, we drew the lines, we had the scenario. If we see that the scenario goes to our favor, then we want to hit the, the mouse key and get into those trades. But if not, that's fine. That's just not our trade. So uh, try to try to play hard to get, you know, when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to stocks. So if the market, if Target, if the S and P, whatever, wanna want us to trade on it, it gotta show us what we wanna see. If it's not that, then fine. We have another many fish in the sea. So let's see. Um, let me drop down to a four hourly chart for a second to get a little bit more. What I'm basically looking at is just trying to understand the, the, the sideway move for the last two months, two and a half months, and try to see if I can find some, um, some milestones or some, uh, some things that might be interesting uh, that I can understand from the price action. In this case, I don't see it a lot, to, to be honest. I don't see a lot of uh, what I can do with it. Volume coming in at the bottom, that's uh, that's a good sign for uh, for that pop to the upside. Also, uh, as we did, as we had uh, yesterday or two days ago, I'll go back to the daily chart. And this is the scenario I, will, um, I would have worked with. One option is basically popping up, breaking through that resistance testing it as support, so, so pulling back to it, and only then try to catch that area and bounce with it, probably to the 200 EMA or that close of the gap. Again, you, you have a nice gap right here at around 147, 145-ish. So this is that could be a nice play. That's, a, that's about $7 to the upside or a tiny bit more. One move, one potential move. Uh, second one will be actually trying to catch the next drop. So basically breaking that support, retesting it, and only then try to add more to the position uh, you have, or maybe um, get a new one and try to break through, to break all the way to the 114, 115. That's that's the only thing I see right now. Um, let me take the weekly chart for a second. The moves are pretty sharp now. Yeah, that, that's what I see at least for now. In most cases, you want, like generally speaking, you would prefer to see instead of just consolidating or sideway move, you would prefer to see a drop and then try to buy the dip on the drop and not a sideway and then try to buy the dip on the sideway, right? In most cases, it's better to have a, like a trend just before uh, you get in into to a long position from the bottom, right? Or the opposite, if we're talking about uh, shorting the top. Uh, uh, T K T R K A. You want to short it? That's a dollar fifty stock. Mm. 
I don't get it. I can't answer that, Alex. Sorry, that's uh, out of my uh, <laughs> out of my range. If uh, if I would would have done something with it, it's only going to be intraday, and then it makes sense. Maybe a bit too late now, uh, but uh, but yeah, it would have made sense to try to short it maybe from the top. But yeah, I'm not a, be a big fan of penny stocks, although <laughs> a lot of our funded traders are trading penny stocks just because we give uh, plenty of buying power and you can easily short anything uh, we have on the 12,000 symbols that we have on uh, on our platform. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a more of a Tesla and QQQ kind of guy, at least these days. Okay, let's see what else. Um, FX Trader, can you comment briefly on relationship of the uh, dollar card? Mm, I wouldn't go into that. Sorry about that, Powell, just because um, I'm not in the FX market. So regarding the, the correlation between them, I'm not that aware of. So I wouldn't uh, want to say something uh, not right. Um, Doug Padler, you're asking, how does the model hold up in a choppy market? What do you mean? First of all, uh, what what type of model when you when you say in a model? Oh, the model of adding to a winner. Yeah, so that obviously should be. I mean, you should do that when the confirmation is higher, right? So when you have, like I said, um, going back, let's say for the Nasdaq, right? Let's take the four hourly. So, okay. After you analyzed everything, and let's say you reach that moment when you see it happen, the chances for you to, to be right on what we just uh, drew, in case you will see that in the future, the chances that the price will bounce from it are very high, right? Um, hopefully you you did it many times and you already saw that you analyze incorrectly in most cases and you understand the market structure and everything. So the chances are high that it will bounce up. And if so, it just makes sense to look on uh, adding to your position and basically you do expect to have a movement um, to your favor, right? So you will look for a sm tiny, small, tiny little uh, pullbacks to add to your position. Of course, if we're talking about a choppy market, like um, this is not a choppy market, yeah? We are trending down. A choppy market will be um, like if we look at the um, um, TGT chart, and we saw, and we saw it um, just moving like that to the uh, basically sideways or consolidating. And then on those trade, I would never add more to my position and attack it. To be honest, I wouldn't take any trade during this period of time of uh, the sideways on TGT as we just saw. This is not a place to place a trade, right? because you want to aim for 
a place, you want to aim for placing a trade when you have more space, you have more uh, like more um, uh, time or hair to, to basically move to the upside or the downside. This is why I also created this scenario only when I'll see the break of it or break through it and retest, then the confirmation will be higher. And now I can take the, the trade and understand that in most cases, it, if it will go to my favor, then I can add more to it, uh, even if it's uh, pulling back, right? Hope it makes sense. Um, okay. I and PX. You guys loving this penny stocks, huh? Okay. Uh, so I guess intraday, you, you're talking about intraday probably. Let me try to quickly look at it. I don't like the chart whatsoever. I got to tell you this. I mean, even so today, I mean, there are times that you can play around with it. Maybe in, like on the 25th of July, it was a, a nice day to look at. But this day, I mean, just, a, no, it's just a not day to trade. Um, let's drop to the 15 minute. And short it. Okay, so so we can look at uh, yeah, so we can look at this level between let's let me mark it. This is roughly the area you want to look at between twenty to uh, twenty one, right? And this is a, a good place that you can either uh, add more to your position, let's say, in this case, um, or, um, or try to take another attempt. That's a, that's a good place to short it. If it will break through it, then I don't see a reason to stay. Uh, drop into this area right here could be a nice place to start covering. But come on, guys, there are so many stocks to trade. Why focusing on that? There are so many good stocks to trade. So much volatility these days. It's crazy. And if it's like I said, if it's uh, buying power that you need, just go to a website, sign in, pass the evaluation, get funded. We offer up to $260,000 of buying power. So that, that could be enough to trade any, any, type of, uh, any type of stock with a very nice uh, chunk. Okay. Uh, yeah, do we have uh, David more one more time, one more uh, minute for one more symbol? Uh, sure, yeah, go ahead. Okay, cool. So let's do coin for a second. That's also uh, always interesting to see, you know, uh, a company coming from the crypto, basically, super interesting, very volatile, and Let's take the weekly chart for a second just to get the idea. I'll move this line. Okay. From 400 all the way to 50, held it nicely. Again, pretty nice um, positive diversion in the MACD as well. Lower highs, while the price creating lower lows. 
but we are still in that we're still in that range, right? Between the 100 and 50. That's a nice range looking at it uh, from uh, from a weekly uh, from a weekly perspective. That's a range. But if you're dropping down to an hourly chart, obviously you can do a lot of stuff uh, there. Long term, I wouldn't touch it yet, just because it didn't prove anything, and we are still in that range. Again, when, when talking about long term. Uh, that's a nice range, but still didn't do much. I don't see any trend. I, I can't really understand if the buyers are in control or the sellers are in control. It's like trying to anticipate a break of a flag, right? In most cases, it will be kind of hard. Maybe using level two, it will help. But then we're talking about the weekly chart in this case. It's very hard to to um, imagine if uh, that the price uh, should break up or down so in this case i wouldn't live i would have uh, just stay away and again if we're talking about uh, weekly chart uh, long-term relation long-term uh, investing but uh, when we're dropping down let's say for a hourly chart then we can start working with something So on an hourly chart, we had a nice move all the way from the 50 all the way to the upside. So basically the lower uh, line of the channel or the, uh, of the sideway move, then the pullback, very easy pullback compared to what we saw on the big pop, right? So the pullback, uh, you can also say again, the angle is less uh, sharper than what we saw on, on the upside move. And we might be able even to put it in a, in a channel. Right here. So we have two support, uh, even three support lines, uh, three support points and resistance as well. So best case uh, for me would be to wait till see a break. You can see the 200 EMA that held as support, the, the green line held as support, then became resistant. So breaking through it, retesting it, then pushing higher, right? Then uh, that, that's one option and that could be a great move to the upside because we have Plenty of room to to close this gap um, at around 95, all the way to 100. This gap right here, so that makes sense that we can uh, try to take this trade. And for the downside, we do have a strong support again coming at around this area, around 70. 